All right, today I'm going to be showing you how to fix a blower motor transistor using the failed blower motor transistor, the transistor bought online, and a soldering iron. Now, what you will need is obviously a soldering iron transistor and a failed transistor, but you also need to have taken this apart uh, previously and looked inside and seen what transistor you need to get. It may not be the same. Um, this is out of a early 2000s Honda Odyssey. I want to say 98 to 2004. I could be wrong. Um, but the body style before the 2005. And this particular transistor needed for that one is a Toshiba 2SD1525 and then it has an asterisk and 418. But I'm sure the numbers before the asterisk are the ones that are relevant. Now, these fail often because they overheat. Uh, components inside heat up and they fail. Heat is the the enemy of electronics. They that's pretty much the main reason they fail. Um, now this one, it has these huge cooling fins here to try to radiate some of the heat off there. And since this piece is only creating heat whenever the blower motor is active the blower motor blows air over this and it um, is able to cool it down. So what may have happened is possibly the cabin filter was clogged and restricted air to it and heat was not able to be taken off of this fast enough and just kept heating up, heating up, heating up until it failed. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take this apart and replace the transistor in it. Um, so I'm going to start out by taking off these three gold screws that are on there and uh, that probably just takes off this cooling fan assembly and then you should be able to there's probably more screws underneath there so we'll see here in a second now as you can see here I have the uh, casing off and this is how it comes apart now there's just two more screws left these two and then the assembly should be ready to come off um, it will also bend I forget because the if you can barely see in there the transistor is another screw going through it to heat sink it to this cooling fin so I'm going to be taking these two screws off and then we have to bend it back and uh, replace it. Now as you can actually see, this is actually for me previously taking it apart, it wasn't like this before, but um, it's broken here so I'll only be able to show you one of them how to get it out, but um, if you were to have all three in there, it would be kind of a pain. Actually, since you're just replacing, you could just fold this, like keep folding it back and forth until the metal does fatigue like that and uh, then replace it. But uh, I'm going to show you how to get these out of there. So what I'm doing right now is getting my soldering iron out and assembling it. And uh, you want to make sure it's, you want to make sure it's properly heated up. Um, you don't want to be sitting there forever heating on something and the soldering iron isn't even hot enough to, to fully melt the solder. So let's go ahead and set that aside. I might need new solder, I don't know. We'll see. But we're going to get that plastic off there. No reason for it to be on there anymore. Um, so you can see that this is, as you can see, this is probably. I'd say a centimeter above and you just want to make sure that this f folds back in here nicely like that you just want to make sure it folds back in there just how it would be normal you don't want to solder it and then just have no room and possibly these prongs kink and touch each other and that'd be worst case scenario so we want to avoid that um, I'm going to try to keep from bending that so I can show you guys how to take this out. So this particular soldering iron, I'm going to put the exhaust port above. Now personally I like butane a lot more than electric. I used electric for a long time and butane just gets so much hotter so much faster and just makes a lot easier to get the job done with. So still trying not to bend that too much. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to set the soldering iron down there. Let's make sure it's in the frame. 
It is. All right. And uh, I'm going to set something under it. I'm going to set this nice non-flammable oven mitt type thing um, under it. So I have these because I don't want to touch it. It's going to be hot. This is obviously probably not even hot yet. So it's not even really worth messing with. I'm going to wait till that warms up and then we'll get back to it. Another thing to that you should make sure of is just make sure you solder the transistor going the right direction because these prongs are separate things. Um, it's not the, uh, you can't just, you know, it's supposed to go like that. You can't just flip it like that and expect it to work. It won't work. And it may cause more damage to your car than fix anything. So you just want to make sure you solder it back in like that with the um, this particular one with the black part facing up. Uh, relative to this part being down and um, I mean just pay attention to details when you're doing this I think this may be hot enough so we'll try to heat this up now it's sad to say uh, I'm pretty upset that my phone ran out of memory right in the middle of that video so this is the after um, you can see that one got a little bit sloppy if it'll focus. It's not even focusing. Got a little bit sloppy. Um, but it's all in there, it's all in there solid, and it's going the right direction. Uh, now, to get, I didn't really, I wasn't really able to show you, but to get this one out, uh, you pretty much just have to heat up the prongs, or prong in this case, and as you see the, the solder turn to liquid, you just just pull it up and then if you still if you decide to keep all the prongs in there you just uh, keep heating it up pull it pull it pull it pull it pull it and you can actually I decided not to do it because I I want to show you guys how to do it without but you can buy desoldering braid and it's pretty much just a, a strand of braided copper that absorbs the solder that uh, you heat up but I wanted to show you guys how to do it without unfortunately the video cut off in the middle of it and uh, I did not get to show you guys how it turned out, but now as you can see, it is all back together. Um, I mean, all you should need to do is just put it back in your car and run it. And I just pretty much fixed a blower motor transistor for ten dollars versus the uh, over a hundred dollars. I mean, if you'd include probably labor, also over a hundred dollars. So, so thanks for watching. Um, I'm really sorry you know, that stopped where it did. That was really unfortunate and I'm pretty mad about it. But I guess it happens. It's annoying. But I mean just let me know if you need me to make a video about how to solder or anything like that because that's essentially all you do is you just solder this back in there. I solder the new one in there. So let me know if this fixed your blow motor transistor. That's that's what I'm curious about because again, this was a uh, this was when I was a Honda technician, and I took this out and I, I planned to to use this as a diagnostic tool, but then I stopped working there. I quit, but so I, I just didn't get a chance to plug this into a new one and see if it actually works because I do not own a Odyssey. So let me know if it fixed yours. Thanks for watching.